In this video lesson, I want to try to create one more complex part in Onshape using Revolve with Dimensions. And as you can see on this file, it is a complex part. But don't be overwhelmed by the part, we're just going to take it one little piece at a time. The first thing, if we're using our print reading skills, we notice that there's something odd about these numbers. First of all, all the numbers don't read the same way. That's because this is a metric file. Um, so that we're going to have to do in Onshape is turn our file or convert our units into millimeters. Do we have anything else special? Uh, yeah, so our top view then gets a full section view so we can see inside it. Um, that teaches us that there's a hole that goes all the way from one end to the other. Then we have a detail view on the end of the barbs. Um, those are the little pieces that our tube kind of grabs onto, so there's a tube that slides onto the end of that. Anything else? Um, we've got a repeated pattern that we'll deal with later. Um, an angle. We have 12 uh, millimeter diameter here. And then we've got a radius 1 typical fillet times 6. Remember, not times 6, there's just 6 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They're both right on top of each other. Okay, all right, let's see if we can't. Uh, Let's see if we can get started. The first thing, I'm going to come into Onshape. I have already created a new file. I'm going to go to my three little lines from my document menu, and I'm going to change my workspace units. And I like to change that to millimeters. Great. I'll go ahead and place my sketch in the front view, and I'm going to start off, oops, with a whole bunch of rectangles. All right, so this first one is just going to be this little piece that's on the end. So I need a skinny, tall rectangle. So skinny and tall. All right, this next one is going to be where my hexagon is, and it's actually going to go, I don't know, out here somewhere. Um, we'll deal with that one here in just a little bit. So the hexagons are actually what the wrench attaches to to be able to tighten these things on, but whatever. Okay, so this next one, uh, make sure that you don't accidentally link some of these together because then you're not going to be able to change them without deleting some constraints. So I actually want to drop this one down considerably comes down in here somewhere, and then I've got a skinnier version of the last one that I did. Um, comes out again. Again, don't don't link any of these together by accident, because we don't know where some of them are. I just know that it's not those two. And then I've got a really long one that the barbs and everything are going to go on. Okay, strange enough, that's going to be it. So what do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, six rectangles. All right, let's go from there. So I've got 92 millimeters from one end to the other. Always kind of start off with a big one. Um, so 92 millimeters from this end to this end. Oh, wow, I really drew it big. So 92, enter. And I'm actually going to escape so I can grab my dimension and pull that up. So my proportions were good. I just drew it enormous to begin with. All right, uh, what else we got? Let's see if we can't get some of these on here. I like getting the dimensions on that. I don't have to divide in half first. So 3, 15, 10, 10. So from here to here, that's going to be a 3. This is going to be 15, two 10s in a row. 10, 10, um, a 4, and then it won't let me put that 50 on there. So a 4, and then I can click on it. It is 50. It's just not going to let me put it on there. That's a driven dimension. So it already actually knew that. Okay, fine. All right, let's get those diameters. We can't avoid them all day. All right, what do we got here? We got 25 millimeters from here to here. 25 divided by 2. We need a radius. 25 divided by 2. What else? Um, 12, we're going to ignore that one. I'm going to put the hole in as a hole. So use the hole tool as a 3D feature. I could put it in here, but eh. Um, I don't have anything there. Oh, because that's part of the hexagon. 18. So let's go ahead and hit this. 18 divided by 2. Uh, again, ignore that one. Uh, 22. So here, 22 divided by 2. And then our last one, we got to go all the way to the end here for 18. All right, 18 divided by 2. Here we go. The only things that are blue are these that I don't even know exactly what I'm going to do with yet. So I'm going to leave those guys alone. All right, so what do we got? Um, anything else I can take care of while I'm here? These fillets I'm actually not going to do in here. They truly are what we consider to be an edge treatment because um, they're so little. I don't want to trim any of these lines like I have in some of the ones in the past. I want to leave them as just solid rectangles, so I'm going to do this fillet 3D. All right, it's time for the barbs. Um, 
Let's zoom in and let's go ahead and just take care of one of them. All right, so I come here. Make sure that you don't lock on the middle. So come here and go up. All right, what else? Um, I've got 15 degrees. And then it goes in 7 millimeters. So click on the dot, click on the dot, and 7. Okay. Um, let's see if we can't get the next barb on there. So it's going to drop down and back up again. We might be able to use the equals tool in some of that, and I probably will use some of that here in a minute. But let's see if we can't get this first one, first full one on there. So from the end to here, that's 10, and then another 7. And then another 15. Okay, there are actually a ton of ways I could do the rest of this. There's not really a wrong way if you come up with the right answer, so that's all completely up to you. One of the right ways is to use this rectangular pattern or linear pattern that will allow us to reproduce a pattern that's evenly spaced along a line. Um, if you can figure out how to use that tool, that's fine. I'm going to cover that into another video, but for this one, I'm just going to try to keep it simple. Is there anything I can do to help myself out? Well, as I draw these, I can use this equals tool. We've used it in the past, so I can make this one and that one equal to each other. This one and this one equal to each other. And let's see what just happens if I put on the 10. So from here to here, if you're 10, it's made the entire thing black already, so I get to skip the 7 and the 15. Well, yeah, because this length was declared by the 15, so these two together create the hypotenuse and size leg A, and that must automatically make that one. So, sweet. Uh, with that equals tool, I can save myself a ton of time. So, I'll be right back, and I'm going to go ahead and knock out the other ones. Okay, we look good. Let's see if we've got enough of them. So just counting the diagonals, I've got one, two, three, four, five. And do I have them? One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Everything is black. Um, folks, I think we are good to go. Let's go ahead and try to revolve it. So I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to get rid of these planes. They're always in my way. Get rid of the origin. Revolve. Um, didn't pick anything, so let's start doing it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. No barbs. Revolve axis around here. I'm happy with that. Okay, awesome. We've got these two big rings here, uh, but we'll deal with those later. Let's see if we can go ahead and throw the hole in there. So new sketch on the end. Uh, we'll square it up. I'm going to use my point tool, and we should be able to find the middle of that. Sweet. All right, I'm done. Finish sketch and hole. It's a simple hole this time. It's a through simple hole, and I need to pick my point. What is the diameter? Diameter 12 through. They actually identified that twice. So it's identified up here and down in here. Let's just make sure it goes all the way through. It does. Um, so that must be it. Okay, so this is where the air and everything comes through this valve. So we've got the barbs where the plastic tube and everything pushes onto here. Um, all right, let's see if we can't go ahead and get these hexagons done. All right, what are we going to do? I'm going to do a new sketch on one of these rings. So I'll do it on there, and if I look at it directly from the right, it looks like the point is supposed to go up. So I'm going to grab my polygon tool, I'm going to find the middle, and I'm just going to draw it out. So once you place it once, you then get to decide how many sides it's going to have. So I want six, and I place it. Okay, so what else? Um, it tells me between flats that I have 27 millimeters. So dimension tool from one flat to another flat, I have 27 millimeters. All right, and then I need to try to get it standing up. This really isn't a vital part, um, but I'd like it to go ahead and lay the way theirs is. So I'm going to use the vertical tool, and I'm click on one of my points and another point. And what it's going to do is make those two points vertical to each other. I could have also just grabbed the vertical tool and clicked on one line. Um, I couldn't do anything horizontal, so I can either make these two points vertical to each other, or I could have picked one of the two sides. Okay, what am I going to do with that? 
I'm going to draw another circle out here somewhere, and I'm done. What? I, I, I actually want that. I want that empty spot. So I'm going to extrude this time. It's already picked it for me. I want it to be a remove, and it's going to go not blind through all. And it's going to cut both of those at the same time for me out of the revolve. So now you can kind of see why I needed them to be so big. I didn't need them to be as big as I did make them. Um, I actually made them way too big, but it really didn't matter. I'm going to remove that portion of them anyways. Awesome. Uh, so I used the revolve to create the solid and then use the extrude to turn them into the shape that I wanted. All right. Um, so now all we should have left is the edge treatments. So the fillets, six of them, at a radius of one millimeter. So one, and then I'll go ahead and put it on there, one millimeter. And I can get them all in the same tool. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So it looks like it goes in and then out again. So it's a nice smooth transition between both of those because both fillets are at the same place. That's it, folks. So that's everything. Um, in real life, something like this end would be threaded and screw onto something. Um, but on shape right now, it doesn't, doesn't do well with um, holes that have threads into them. Um, so everything looks great. Remember to come down to your mass properties, click on your part. Remember to change this to a unique color so that you can submit it as yours. And this finishes our entire series of trying to do revolve with dimensions for complex parts. Hopefully you learned something.